Hmm. Interesting. Um, so let's talk about adverse effects because we had talked earlier. I mean, one obvious adverse effect is you could get addicted to it. Like you could become physiologically dependent on this substance. And I actually had someone, I had made a post about having Kratom as a, as a part of my life. And I had gotten somebody else that had said to me that they were felt like they were in a bit of trouble because they were using Kratom um, and they were using it based on this, oh, it's okay because it's natural, blah, 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 this misunderstanding. And then all of a sudden they need 10 grams a day or they feel like they're falling apart, right? And it just sort of crept up on them and they didn't think about it because it was no big deal. As, similarly, in some sense, maybe as people who don't really seem to think coffee is a big deal and then they're eating, drinking six, seven, eight cups a day. And if they don't get at least five, then they feel like shit and they treat other people like shit. Um, but, you know, coming off of coffee, although painful, maybe is less intense than coming off of something that has an opioid um, effect in the body. But we have this potential danger of addiction, or excuse me, physiological dependence. What are the other adverse effects that are present for um, Kratom that we know of, either acutely, um, since you said it doesn't tend to suppress the respiratory system, um, or chronically? So what has been reported in the literature and what we have seen is uh, classical. Uh, uh, so for one, it's 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 a dose dependent adverse effect profile that we see. Um, mm -hmm. We see constipation as uh, as one of the primary and most reported uh, adverse effects, uh, which you can expect from an opioid uh, or from something that acts on opioid receptors. Uh, we see nausea and vomiting um, uh, that can occur, primarily nausea, not so much vomiting. The issue with um, ingesting or drinking the actual uh, extract, if you just have the powder and you drink it, uh, some people use honey or something if you're preparing the tea. Yeah orange juice, yeah. anything that makes it a little bit more palatable because it is rather bitter if you drink it and it's not it's not very well tasting. Uh, so that can cause just nausea uh, potentially. And there is just a limit of how much you can drink at a time without uh, having really a, a very uh, bad stomach experience. Stomach upset was also a common adverse effect. Um, I guess when you take it in pill form, um, you avoid those effects, uh, those adverse effects to some degree. Um, uh, then what is a little bit more serious are potential effects on the liver uh, that have been reported um, after a few days of ingestion. Uh, so that can occur within five to ten days. Uh, depending a little bit, that's what I've seen in the literature. F five, These... Let's let me let's zoom in on that before you continue, because this is sort of like kind of hot. I mean, it kind of comes and goes, but sort of hot right now because there was recently a report that came out from, uh, you know, like a, a big organization that talks about liver toxicity of different substances and stuff and liver health, and they were suggesting that um, that oh, there's I think one of the one of the headlines I saw, which headlines don't mean shit, um, but was, you know, like this association is sounding the alarm on Kratom. Um, and then when I sent you that report, I mean, you said something like, this is a very interesting use of data. So are we talking like people who take Kratom every day for five to 10 days in a row at, at you know, we'll say maybe five or something grams, usually common is about five to eight grams at a higher dose for people, that that causes liver problems? Or is it more complex than that? Is it everybody? Is it some people? Is the reports like, do we know definitively it was Kratom? Is there some sort of genetic predisposition? What do we know? Like, what is what is like the, the reasonable assessment of danger around liver toxicity with Kratom? So um, when we talk about uh, causation, um, something being causative, something uh, being the reason that something else happens. So Kratom being the reason that we have uh, a liver toxicity. Um, we stand on, currently we don't stand on very solid ground. Um, yes, we can say that Kratom in some cases may contribute to liver, um, a toxicity to liver adverse effects. 
in the report that you sent me, and that's what mm -hmm. I'm analyzing now. There are more reports in the literature, but let me just focus on that one as an example for now. Uh, there were seven reports of liver toxicity that were specifically discussed in that one. Six of them uh, also used alcohol. Um, so alcohol is a known liver toxicant. Uh, so if you combine that with kratom, there were also no other reports of what other medications were these patients potentially on. So if we throw in something else like benzodiazepine or uh, something like acetaminophen, something like Tylenol, that is also liver toxic, um, what are additive effects like? Uh, so we have a lot of different uh, factors that can play into that. Now, I don't, I don't want to downplay that some people may be at higher risk of developing liver toxicity with the use, with the high use of kratom, with high doses of kratom, and they should be careful with using kratom. Uh, they might want to consider um, consulting with a healthcare professional um, or at least checking if not to use uh, other uh, potential liver toxicants such as alcohol um, or acetaminophen. If you use it for pain, for example, and you're also using ibuprofen or acetaminophen in conjunction with kratom, then you might be at an increased risk of developing liver toxicity. So you have a lot of factors that can play into that. Um, in addition, uh, and that's another point that I sometimes like to harp on together, but I, I, I feel like we have been harping on that as uh, not only as researchers, but also as just, I want to say caring individuals, but I, I uh, maybe I, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the, the issue currently is that since the FDA is saying Kratom is no good, we want it gone basically entirely, that we don't have any regulation really regarding what Kratom products are entering the United States. So we don't have really any quality control of what consumers have access to. And therefore there might be Kratom products out there that contain pesticides, that contain anything, heavy metals uh, that uh, might actually not be healthy, that might be uh, really not good. So if we had better regulations in place where we have some kind of uh, just uh, uh, where, where consumers knew that they had a good quality Kratom product that they have access to with some kind of labeling guideline and um, some kind of at least internal lab check um, that we know that good manufacturing practices are followed, then we might have had a uh, a better chance to at least reduce the number of of, of kratom um, uh, associated uh, liver uh, incidences. Now, if you compare these seven cases to the annual cases of Tylenol-related liver toxicity, um, I don't know if I can display that in in a graph, <laughs> but it's like minuscule. It's it's really nothing. Now, I don't want to downplay these six or seven cases, though, because everybody who obviously has adverse effects. Uh, so we need to be careful. We need to be aware of that. And, and uh, everybody who uh, intends to use Kratom should always look at their current medication that they're taking and, and should be aware of potential drug interactions. Hmm. So, so what you're saying here is there is absolutely evidence and reason to be cautious around liver toxicity with kratom, although it is not as uh, it is not a oh my god kratom causes liver damage scenario the way that it's being presented in the report that I sent you where it's you know sounding the alarm on kratom. So not I, I if everybody who was using kratom would have uh, elevated liver uh, enzyme values as was reported in this case. Um, then I would definitely say stay away from kratom. Uh, I would not, not be, uh, kratom would, 
I don't think that we would have five to 16 million somewhere uh, in that range of Quantum users in the United States. Uh, so if you are taking Quantum in reasonable doses, um, three to five grams, five to eight is already on the high end, to be honest, uh, three to five grams uh, per dose, uh, three doses per day, um, and you you have a good um, Quantum product uh, that meets kind of the current labeling guidelines that have been put forward by the American Kratom Association, um, then I, I would say that you are probably doing the best you can uh, and you keep in mind potential drug interactions with other drugs that can affect your liver, then you're probably doing the best you can at the moment to avoid liver toxicity. I'm not excluding it entirely, but uh, you're probably doing the best that you can. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the um, like the percentage difference between five to seven cases out of fifteen to or five to sixteen million people taking kratom, um, and how significant that is. Although when I started doing further research, there definitely was multiple reports online of people having uh, liver issues. Although one person um, I, they had expressed they had some sort of credentials to make this statement had exp had said it had something to do with a genetic predisposition towards how well you detox in your liver or, or with kratom specifically and and that all the reports that had been discussed um on the on like reddits and stuff um said that okay this is what happens after yeah five five to ten days urine gets very yellow you start to develop jaundice and there's these other effects and that that every case that had been talked about was like as soon as kratom was discontinued all those all those effects went away and they went back to normal that it wasn't permanent effect as long as those things were noticed and like kratom use was stopped immediately um do you have any more information on that or is that sort of like what we know that that is our current knowledge yes uh now uh if if it's only the liver toxicity, if that is the only occurring symptom, like you said, yonders, uh, then discontinuation is obviously the path to go. Um, uh, and and if uh, I would still advise to consult with a healthcare provider because there might be other issues associated with that. Um, it might not be the kratom; it might be something else that's going on. So. Um, it's always good to to seek out um, a healthcare provider in, in such situations. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, we were talking about adverse effects, um, and I am curious if you have more to add before I ask you specifically about what does and does not um, sort of count as, I think what the recent study from John, Johns Hopkins said was a Kratom use disorder. Is there any other adverse effects you want to mention before we go on to that topic? So uh, there have been a few reports of uh, particularly um, uh, lung uh, edema, uh, acute lung edema uh, that have been attributed to uh, potentially uh, high metragynin levels post-mortem. Uh, so uh, we don't know if that is um, kratom specific. Um, uh, I, I don't want to lean myself out of the window here, uh, but um, it might be something related to the cardiovascular system. So it might have something to do with heart. Um, people might be predisposed if they use kratom in very high amounts, way, well above eight grams uh, per dose. Um, uh, if they use it over a long period of time that they may develop uh, cardiovascular issues, so something with the heart, something with blood pressure, um, that then might extend to particularly uh, the lungs, um, and um, that. But it has only been shown in isolated cases so far. Uh, so that that is something that I have um, seen. It has been reported in, I believe, four cases to date, uh, post mortem. So. Um, um, where uh, mitragynin was detected in the blood uh, of deceased people. Hmm, interesting. A any was that the last? Was that the last one that you wanted to that talk was, about? I, but there are certainly others, but those were the ones that were standing out to me um, that people, sh I think, should be aware of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 